Good afternoon. This is Josh, Josh Minlin here at Chicken Analytics. I'd like to welcome you to our presentation of how to own earnings season with options. Presenting today is Mark Chaikin, founder and CEO of Chaikin Analytics. Chaikin Analytics is not registered as a broker dealer or investment advisor, either with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission or with any state securities regulatory authority. Chaikin Analytics is for educational purposes only and is not a trade advisory service. Past results of any trading system or methodology do not guarantee future results. As a reminder, this webinar is being recorded and a copy will be sent to all registrants. Please submit your questions via the Zoom Q&A window, which you can access in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. We have a special guest with us today, Tom Gentile. He's the founder of Money Calendar Alerts and Power Profit Trades. To get us started, here's Tom Gentile. Hey everybody, I uh, want to welcome all of my Power Profit traders to a very special webinar we're doing today. Uh, this is, uh, I'll, I'll talk about Mark in just a moment. I just want to uh, mention that um, I have been discussing earnings season quite a bit on our, uh, our, on our board at PowerProfitTrades.com. And uh, it, this is, uh, it's not a coincidence that I have Mark on uh, discussing uh, his power readings with Shake and Analytics. Uh, it, I think Mark complements a lot of what we do very well. If, 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 as you guys know, I'm a pattern trader, all right? And, you know, the one thing I always say is that, uh, that there is no guarantees, but when I see the same thing happening over and over again, I can't help but believe, based on my rules-based strategies, that we're going to see the exact same thing happen again. And for the uh, earnings season and the month of July as a whole, it's been a fantastic month. Uh, for a lot of what we were doing. And so, you know, I thought who better to bring on and discuss this with uh, from his point of view and with his tools, um, I, I'm going to introduce Mark Chaik. And Mark, for, for those of you who don't know Mark, I met Mark years ago in Philadelphia. And, uh, and he and I have, uh, you know, the, the, the um, industry of trading that we have in common. But what I think separates both of us from the rest of the pack is that there are plenty of analysts out there that do fundamental uh, testing. But what Mark and I share is that we are basically rules-based traders. We each use a set of rules. Um, I have a particular set of rules that I use. I'm going to let Mark talk about what he uses today because many of you that follow me, you know what I use uh, with my rules-based trading. Um, but Mark's been around the street now for over 40 years, and he launched something called Chaken Analytics, which uh, used to be called Chaken Power Tools. And one thing he's really, really well known for on the street is what's called the Chaken Power Gauge Rating. So I'm going to let him explain what it is, what the power gauge is, how it works within Chaken Analytics, and he's also going to be demonstrating this going through uh, Q2 earnings and, and a look at uh, what's to come using the Chaken Analytics software package. So, uh, Mark, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Tom. You know, we changed it from Chaken Power Tools because we were getting a lot of hits from people looking for Black & Decker. It just wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't working as a website. <laughs> well, that's how come you changed it. I never knew that. That's the reason. <laughs> All right. Well, I am going to uh, close my mouth and open my ears, and I'm going to uh, uh, see what it, you have uh, to say about uh, Q2 and where you see things going. And then uh, I'll chime back in toward the end of your session, and uh, maybe we'll do a little uh, dialogue there. That'd be great, Tom. Thank you for the wonderful introduction and for turning out such a big crowd, and welcome, everybody. Uh, we're calling today's webinar, How to Own Earnings Season with Options. And we're going to give you some really up-to-date examples, including some stocks that reported after the close today that are built into the webinar deck. But basically, people are very nervous during earnings season. And the check and power gauge rating that Tom referred to is like a GPS for traders during earnings season. I'm going to show you how and how to use it, how to deal with stocks before they report earnings and after they report earnings. So a little bit about my background, 50 years on Wall Street. For 45 years, I've been doing technical analysis research, created Chaken Money Flow, which you're all familiar with on your online brokerage platforms on stockcharts.com, Bloomberg and Reuters, if you're a professional. But I always knew that fundamentals drove the market. So 
fundamentals and technicals, as you're going to see, is the key to trading successfully, particularly in the options area. For six years, I headed up the options department at Tucker Anthony, a major retail a regional brokerage firm, 250 brokers, over 10,000 options traders, maybe more. And I can tell you that 95% of those options traders lost money and going to explain the reason and how we solved that problem. Along the way, I've been mentored by some of the smartest and most successful institutional investors. Some of them were clients at firms like Fidelity and T. Rowe Price, hedge funds in New York. Others were colleagues of mine at brokerage firms. And the reason that's important is because when I came out of retirement in 2009 to start Chaken Analytics with my wife, Sandy, I drew on everything I had learned from these successful buy side portfolio managers and hedge funds to create the Chaken Power Gauge rating, which is really the culmination of my life work. I had always wanted to move beyond technical analysis to create a predictive indicator that could do the fundamental heavy lifting. I think everybody on this webinar would acknowledge that fundamentals are important, but how do you do the research? And do you want to be dependent on brokerage firm research with conflicts and so forth, or Barron's or Jim Cramer on TV, who's smart, but uh, gets it right most of the time, but not all of the time. So we're going to be talking about the Chaken Power Gauge rating, how it can be your GPS during earnings season, and really specific examples of what to do and how to do it. So in today's webinar, we're going to cover five keys to successful options trading. Obviously, you got to find the stocks to trade from the long and the short side. And we do that with that combination of fundamentals and technicals, taking power gauge rating and relative strength to the market. This isn't Wells Wilder relative strength. This is how is the stock doing relative to the market. Then we're going to show you a very special way to use taking money flow that's never been written up in any of the documentation on your websites or on your online brokerage firms to anticipate future price movement. If you take nothing else away from this webinar, you're gonna to thank Tom for having me on because I've used this technique and we taught it to institutional investors for over 30 years. We're gonna focus on rules-based entries. That's the way you make money in options. Also talk a little bit about playing good defense, avoiding landmines, destroy portfolios, avoiding the temptation of bottom fish. And then finally, probability-based options trades. Once you've done everything else, those first four steps, for trades that Tom's not recommending, how do you find the right trade? It's very time-consuming. I'm going to show you how to do it very quickly and in a way that's compatible with this whole rules-based approach that Tom was talking about. So we'd like to start the webinar off with a poll question. Do you see any risks ahead for stocks? And Josh, why don't you read off the answers? Sure, so uh, results flying in. Uh, I'll share the results with everybody. And most people do see risks for stocks ahead. Now, this is interesting because when we've been taking this poll, uh, we do a couple of webinars um, every week, uh, one and a half a week. Uh, it's been more balanced. People have been generally bullish, and I have encouraged people to be bullish. But I see risks ahead as well. And Tom and I were talking about this earlier. What we've been through here in 2018 is a transition from an uptrend on autopilot in 2017 to a roller coaster of a correction in 2018. 17 was easy if you ignored the headlines. So let's look back. This is a one-year chart of the SPY. This is the most actively traded instrument in the U.S. markets, also has almost 200 billion in assets. And what we see on this chart is that roller coaster that followed that wonderful up move in 2017, where we didn't even get a pullback of 3%. Unfortunately, that move ended on January 26th with what's known as a French curve or hockey stick formation. When you see that, when you break out of a very nice orderly uptrend, even though check-in money flow was strong, the institutions were supporting the rally, you know it's going to end badly. You just don't know when. So we started what should have been a pullback, and it turned into a correction, which means more than 10% drop on a closing basis in the S&P 500. 
because of a blow up in a very exotic exchange traded note based on volatility. But then we formed a W-shaped bottom. This is the way declines of 10% or more. This is the way corrections always end. You make a waterfall drop, panic selling. In this case, there were a lot of margin calls. You rally up and then you come back down and test the lows. So that's what happened in March. And since March, we, two things have happened. Number one, we've got a nice pattern of an uptrend with higher highs and higher lows that ran into a ceiling at 2,800. It's a natural round number. It also represented resistance. And then we broke through about a week and a half ago. But along the way, if we look at our relative strength indicator, small caps were outperforming large caps. How do we know that? Because the relative strength indicator has been red here since April. But we've seen good institutional support. Check and money flow is strong. So if we look at this chart, we see a couple of things. Our longstanding target for the S&P 500, 2018 has been 2850 to 3000. We made it back in January and now we're pressing up against the old highs at 2873. Whether we get there or not depends a lot on how the market reacts to the earnings that came out after the close. Amazon beat estimates, uh, Expedia beat, Intel disappointed. A lot of activity after the close today. Looks like Amazon may be selling off now because guidance was weak. So we may never get to 2873 before the midterm election, but I think we'll get there afterward. And that's part of the theme of this opening session. So here's what the Russell 2000 small cap index looks like. It's the IWM, much stronger chart pattern. Small caps have been outperforming large caps, whole series of reasons, the tax cuts, the tariff wars hurt large versus small companies. Domestic revenues are usually concentrated in the small cap area. So we have a much stronger uptrend in place and we broke out to new all time highs a lot sooner as we did in the NASDAQ 100. But we've got a triple top up here near all-time highs. Check and money flow is still green, but it's not as robust as it was. So the bottom line is the technicals are still intact, but we're in the middle of earnings season, and there's a very interesting pattern that we're gonna look at on the next slide after we discuss the notion that we're in a period in 2018 of higher interest rates and rising earnings. This is a very bullish scenario, but it's also the midterm election year. Now, when you read the papers, see the headlines or on CNBC that rising interest rates are bearish for the market, just don't believe that. Rising interest rates in a strong economy that's not yet overheated are actually bullish because it represents loan demand and a strengthening economy. Now, we're going to get a GDP number tomorrow. Larry Kudlow has already telegraphed that I think it's going to be 4.2%. That starts to feel like overheating. One quarter is okay, you get two quarters and the Fed's gonna get really nervous. But here again, the technicals are strong and the backdrop is strong. Fundamentals, phenomenal year over year earnings for the second quarter up 20%. Really strong growing economy. What's the gotcha? The gotcha is the midterm elections. There's a headline from Barron's on March 15th expect stops to drop before the midterm. And then underneath from the Stock Traders Almanac, Yale Hirsch's wonderful publication that I've been getting since the mid 60s, he's done all the pattern work. So he's basically said in the last 14 midterm election years, bear markets began or were in progress in nine of those. Now, I don't think we're gonna get into a bear market, but I do think we're gonna get a correction of six to 10% off wherever we peak here in July. This is the first time I've said this publicly uh, in over six months, we've been extremely bullish. But here's the good news. From the midterm low, which is typically in October, to the high in the pre-election year, and hold on to your seats, the Dow has gained nearly 50%. So let's just do some math. Let's say we got a 10% pullback from the uh, 2850 level, uh, 285 points, that's 2565. If the average 
gain held true, you can do the math here up around 3,700 sometime next year. Don't think it's going to be that good, but here's the bottom line. Expect stocks to pull back, so be willing to sell into strength, particularly when they spike up on earnings, and keep some cash around to look for bargains on the way down. The ideal buy point is some sort of washout in September and October, which happens very, very frequently for a whole series of reasons. Don't turn bearish, be opportunistic, and look for that buy point because from then on, based on historics, and we're talking about uh, 56 years going back, you should see a very strong move off that low. So with that being said, let's say you want to figure out a way to profit from a pullback. Well, we have a module called Options Play embedded in Chaken Analytics to give you these high probability options ideas. And this morning when the S&P was 2833, I asked for bearish strategies on the S&P. And the one that has the green circle and the check mark is what's known as a vertical bearish put spread. We're going to explain why we like vertical spreads, both put and calls. But the bottom line is for $200 this morning, you could have controlled $283,000, I'm sorry, $28,300, 10 put spreads, $2,000. You could protect a portfolio of $283,000 and stay fully invested, or you could make 337% if the S&P 500 were to drop just nine points, less than 4% by the September 7th expiration. So vertical spreads give you a really high probability way to play the downside with very predefined and limited risk. That's just one example. We're gonna have other options examples as we move along. So we've already covered a lot of information in this webinar and that's sort of typical of what you and I are confronted with every day as traders. Information overload, it happens in our daily lives with Facebook and Twitter and Snap and Instagram and email and so forth, on and on and on. As an investor, you've got a lot of information to process. As a trader, you've got to be quick on the trigger. And in theory, if you're options, you're looking at options chains, we don't think you have to. So our solution for information overload is Chaken Analytics for both iPad and desktop, so you can take it with you on the iPad when you're on vacation and you wanna monitor your portfolio, if you're visiting your kids, or if you're taking a vacation, it's all there with you. And we've embedded options play in Chaken Analytics. Now, underlying everything we're gonna talk about and everything we do at Chaken Analytics, there are 26 of us here in Philadelphia supporting our members, is based on the premise that fundamentals drive the market, but emotions drive the market to extremes. And we've been witnessing that all through 2018. We saw that today in Facebook. We saw that last week in Netflix. The path to profits in the 50 years I've been on Wall Street is to combine fundamentals with technicals. And that's why some big institutions are back in the fold using Chaken Analytics. Obviously, Tom with Money Calendar Alert, Power Profit Trades, Jim Cramer's become a big fan. Again, used to be a client of ours when he had his hedge fund in the 90s, because combining fundamentals and technicals is exactly what they do at Fidelity Management. In fact, when they run their mutual funds, the active funds, relative strength is their key driver once they've done the fundamental research. So a lot of social proof, and we're going to show you all the proof you need to come away believing that Chaken Power Gauge rating is the edge you need. It's the edge that those traders at Tucker Anthony, the 95% of options traders who lose money, didn't understand. In order to trade options successfully, you need something like Tom's recurring patterns, or you need a directional edge, something that gives you an edge over all those pros like uh, you see on CNBC, something that gives you an edge by telling you where a stock is headed. Combine fundamentals with technicals into a quantitative model and you've got your directional edge. Then we provide buy and sell signals for better entries and exits. You can be using your own like candle patterns or crossovers or MACD, but the bottom line is discipline, focus. 
methodology you use over and over and over again. So at the core of everything we do, the check and power gauge rating. Looks like the gas gauge on your car when you see the display, it's very simple, but please don't confuse simple with simplistic because this is a very powerful fundamental indicator. Under the surface, there's a lot of number crunching going on. And I've said before on webinars like this, that the check and power gauge rating is like a Chevrolet with a Ferrari engine under the hood. And it can be your GPS during earnings season. The key to making money to owning earnings season with options is the check and power gauge rating. Now, Tom gave us this wonderful shout out, gain the edge needed for trading success. Our proprietary algorithm is very compatible with his rules-based trading approach for stocks and options. And he gave us this wonderful uh, shout out, highly recommend check and analytics to anyone looking to gain the edge needed for trading success. So what got Tom so excited about the check and power gauge rating? Well, first of all, as I said, it reflects everything I learned from very successful buy side portfolio managers over a 30 year career working with institutional investors. The challenge in building the power gauge was they all have different styles and different time horizons. So there are models that I call religious value models, dividend models, growth at a reasonable price models. My challenge, my goal was to build a universal model, an eclectic model that finds a lot of ways to like or not like a stock. And we did it. We look at value, growth, technicals, and sentiment. The value metrics like price to sales and free cash flow to market cap are 35% of the model. But we also look at shorter term factors that persist over time, like earnings surprise. We had about six earnings surprises after the close today and Facebook uh, in the morning, and we'll see some disasters in addition to Facebook as we move into the webinar. Why are earnings surprises important? Well, I learned this from a colleague at Drexel Burnham in the 80s. George Douglas did the original research in earnings surprise and earnings estimate revisions. Earnings surprises, he taught me, come in bunches. There's never just one of them. Uh, the joke in New York is if you see a cockroach, you can be sure there are more around there because there's never just one of them. So when companies start reporting positive earnings surprises like LAM Research in 2016, it persists quarter after quarter after quarter. So we built that into the model because these are the stocks that tend to outperform. And then one other pattern I learned from George, analysts raise or lower their estimates based on earnings surprises. And in spite of what you've heard about dark pools and high frequency traders pushing prices around Wall Street analysts at firms like Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley and UBS, Merrill Lynch, influence institutional investors. So you've got this virtuous syndrome of positive earning surprises, analysts raising their estimates. We built all that into the model. And then we also like industry group relative strength, put the wind at your back. And then look at a couple of sentiment factors that aren't normally in models like short interest and insider activity. The sum total is a model that works because it's based on how Wall Street works. Too many models have been built by newly minted PhDs throwing what I call digital spaghetti against the wall to see what sticks. That's what got us in trouble in 2008. And in 1998, when two Nobel Prize winners almost blew up the market at a hedge fund called Long-Term Capital Management. They built a model, but it wasn't based on how Wall Street works. This model has worked since 2010 when we locked everything down. There's been no changes, no curve fitting, no chasing factors. The model has worked for seven years and it's worked in a meaningful and big way with exchange traded funds, as you'll see in a minute. So here's the performance. All of this is leading up to the fact that I want you to come away from this webinar believing that fundamentals matter and that there's a way to monitor the fundamental potential for a stock to outperform or underperform without having to devote your whole life to it. So the average very bullish stock in the Russell 3000 Going back to 1999, now some of that's back tested, which always looks good, seven years of real time, 20% a year. 
Average very bearish stock, even after a nine-year bull market, up only 1%. If we were doing this in 2010, the average very bearish stock would have been down 6%. So the model works. And the key is to make your long trades happen out of that pool of very bullish stocks and your put trades and short sales out of the very bearish stocks. Now, in 2015, it was absolutely critical to know which stocks had very bearish ratings and shaken analytics because the average very bearish stock was down over 17%. Energy was in a bear market, so were small caps. So we're often asked, well, power gauge is working, but you've been in a nine-year bull market and throw darts and make money in a bull market at the newspaper. And my response has always been, that's true unless your dart happened to land on an energy stock in 2015, because then you are SOL. So these were the fracking stocks like Range Resources and Pioneer and Kinder Morgan, the MLP roll-up, small caps in general. You needed to avoid those. Kinder Morgan dropped from 42 to 10. Under Armour dropped from 43 to 11 in this period. You needed to be aware and out of these stocks or trading them from the short side. One final proof point, and then we're gonna to get to the meat of the examples. Partnership with NASDAQ, three NASDAQ taken indices, large cap, small cap, dividend achiever, four and a half year real time track record. These are buy and hold portfolios. They're not trading portfolios. Get put in place on April 1st, don't change for a year. New York Life, largest mutual insurance company in America, licensed them February of 17. In May, they came out with CSML, the IQ Chaikin small cap ETF that has over 500 million in assets. In December of 17, CLRG, large cap, all with rules based and the Chaikin power gauge being the final decider. That's got 450 million. So almost a billion dollars in assets, almost unheard of. I saw that they had Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful on CNBC just now talking about Amazon's earnings. He's really proud of the fact that he's got 417 million in his small cap ETF. That's a great accomplishment. This serious money that's committed to the Chaikin power gauge by advisors at Morgan Stanley and Merrill Lynch. Again, this is not a recommendation to buy these ETFs. This is a proof point. I wanna keep you engaged as we get into the meat of the presentation and we start with a pattern we call classic Chaikin bulls. Power gauge rating is bullish. That means the fundamental potential is strong. Stock is outperforming the market. We'll see why that's so important in a minute. And Chaikin money flow is strong, telling us that the institutions are accumulating the stock. So here's our poster child for the classic Chaikin bull. We've been using Centene, which has figured out how to make, how to make money in Medicare, actually made a big acquisition that added over 2 million um, subscribers uh, closed on it just last month. We read the chart from the bottom up, different from any way you've been trained. And the reason is because at the bottom of this one year chart of Centene from Chaikin Analytics is the power gauge rating every week. And you can see that it's been bullish in the main for over a year. This is your directional edge. You want to be trading stocks like this from the long side, but only when they're outperforming the market. When a stock with a bullish power gauge rating is outperforming the market, we say the market agrees with the model because no matter how good your fundamental research is, whether you're following Merrill Lynch or Raymond James or Jim Cramer, if the market doesn't agree with you, guess who always wins? Mr. Market, my old friend Marty Zweig, who sadly died too young, used to say, listen to the market. Don't fight the tape. So that's very important. And then we look at check and money flow to see if the institutions are buying. They were buying back in September, October, and they're buying now. And this stock made a new all-time high around 136 ahead of the earnings that came out on Tuesday. And they were better than expected. And we saw some profit taking, which is normal. And we would hope that uh, we'll get another buying opportunity in the stock. Now, another feature of check and analytics that's really important for traders particularly options traders, is either keep a diary or even better, put note on a stock that you're following. Why did you buy it? Why did you sell it? Follow that discipline, repeat it over and over again, and you're really going to improve your trading. 
Now, it's nice to know that there's a pattern like the classic check and bull, but how do you find them? We have a screening program that's unique in check and analytics. What makes it unique is that you can screen on the 20 factors in the model, the power gauge rating itself, and a lot of other technical and universe-related screens. So in this case, for a webinar I did just a week ago, I took a large cap growth universe of 529 stocks because I felt large caps were going to start to outperform small, and they have. I required that the power gauge rating be bullish. And because I want solid companies for this exercise, required that free cash flow be strong. You can doctor up earnings, but cash flow is real or it's not real. And then I applied our two technical factors, money flow and relative strength. I reduced that universe of 529 names down to 12 stocks. Centene is one of them. Expedia, which reported earnings after the close and is up 14 points right now, was another. Humana had a blowout quarter. Remember, this was done a week ago. Citrix, powerful earnings after the close yesterday. Look how this screen could have narrowed the universe down for you as an options trader to 12 names. Then you're looking for entry points. Now, Classic Chake and Bear is perhaps more important because it's the mistakes that we make that hurt us in the market. So if you can avoid the bearish stocks or trade them from the short side with put options or put spreads, you're way ahead of the game. So Classic Chake and Bear, power gauge rating is bearish, meaning the fundamentals are weak. Underperforming the market and Chake and Money Flow is red, not green, telling you institutions are selling the stock. So again, Read the chart from the bottom up because the power gauge rating is your directional edge. And Tesoro is a drug and biotech stock that has dropped from 130 to 34 in the middle of a bull market. Power gauge has been bearish. It's been underperforming the market. So the market agrees with the model and institutions have been selling and you should be selling it too. Now on the screen, we have one of our really powerful patterns for options and swing traders. Call it a relative strength sell signal. Also works on the buy side as we'll see. Really simple pattern. Stock is underperforming the market, moves above its 21 day average and then drops below. When it drops below the 21 day average, that triggers the sell signal. And why I like these signals is that they tend to last four to eight weeks with a 70% accuracy on both the long and the short side. So when you get a signal, particularly early in a move when you've just started to underperform, you can put on an options position that makes sense. You could do a 20 delta option, you can do an 80 delta option. You can go out of the money or you can go in the money. You can buy yourself time and we'll see how important that is. So this is your classic shake and bear. And the stock keeps making new lows to this day. I've been using this for nine months now and I'm not gonna quit on it because there's no reason to. Now this pyramid sums up the shake and methodology because successful trading demands a disciplined methodology. At the top, the power gauge rating for the fundamental potential of the stock. Industry group strength, as I said, very important. Zach's Standard & Poor's published white papers documenting this. Bottom of the pyramid, just two technical indicators, shaken money flow and relative strength. We've got the signals for entries and we provide done for you options ideas with our options play module, which has been licensed by Merrill Edge and Raymond James and Oppenheimer and uh, a lot of other firms that are very demanding about their due diligence. So what does options play do for you as an options trader? Well, first of all, if you're a sort of novice options trader, or even if you're a little more experienced, it explains in plain English what a strategy is all about. And it gives you those three strategies that we saw with the SPY. If you're looking to go long, you can buy 100 shares, you can buy a call, or you can put on a vertical bullish call spread, but it explains it all in plain English if you need that. So let's look at the options just as a little bit of a primer because I know we have people with differing experience levels on here. In fact, if you're um, 
relatively new to options trading, type a big N in the question box, please. And Josh, just tell me if you're seeing a lot of Ns or if we've got a more advanced audience in the house today. Sure, you can, yeah, there you go. Use the Q&A window and we're seeing so far a lot of newer folks. All right, we'll spend just a couple of minutes on this. Call option gives you the right to buy a stock at a fixed price. So if you're buying a call, you want the stock to go up. Lots of different variables, strike price, duration, expiration, in the money, out of the money. A lot to think about. Bottom line is whatever you pay for it is your total risk. On the downside, a put option, just the opposite, gives you the right to sell a stock at a fixed price. So if you bought a put on Facebook yesterday, you're a happy person today because the decline of 40 points work for you. I did that for myself in Netflix last week, bought a couple of out of the money puts, made some nice short term capital gains. But the bottom line is whatever you pay for the cost of the put is your total risk and you're betting that the stock's going to go down. Now, the problem with buying options outright is what's known as time decay. Because you're paying a premium for that option. If it's at the money, it's all premium. If it's out of the money, it's really all premium. And the reality is that at expiration, the option has basically lost all its premium. So one way to counter premium erosion is to use vertical put and call spreads. And the reason is you buy an option and then you sell another option against it to lower the cost. And that option you sell actually benefits from premium erosion. So let's look at an example using one of my favorite stocks to, to hate, Tesla, which is very hard to trade on the short side. If you've tried it, you know what I mean. So Tesla has had a bearish rating off and on for over a year. Our biggest success was when the stock rallied up and triggered those relative strength sell signals. And we actually had vertical put spreads that we had mentioned on webinars. Again, they're not recommendations, they're just ideas. And now you've got the stock breaking down again with an earnings report due out on August 1st. Now, Elon Musk, I've called the PT Barnum of the 21st century. In my opinion, if you like Tesla, buy the car and get out of the stock because this is a disaster in the making. Can't tell you when, but when we go into a bear market and the window for financing closes, this company is going to be uh, trading at 10 bucks, in my opinion. I just can't tell you when, and it could go to 500 first. But here's a way to be short Tesla. This is a $300 stock that's going to report earnings next Wednesday with very limited risk. You can use a vertical put spread. You're putting up $1,670 to control $30,000 worth of Tesla through September 7th. And you've got plenty of profit potential. If the stock drops back down to the previous low of 250, which it made in March, look at that nice return. That spread's going to widen out to $57 from 17 to 40 dollar profit. That's a very high return. It's better than buying the put outright. Why? Because the put would cost you $2,500. This reduces the cost of the put to $1,670. That's why I like vertical spreads so much. Now, let's look at a stock that reported earnings after the close tonight. Now, we knew that when I put this deck together, because on top of the chart, we show you the next earnings report. The moon says to me, after the close, Analysts were raising their estimates on Expedia. Power gauge rating is bullish. And the stock was not spiking up as Facebook was to a new high ahead of the earnings. So was there a trade in options play that made sense? Well, the bottom line was no. The probabilities just weren't there. The cost of the call was too high. The return from the option you were selling on the vertical call spread was too high. So my response was, odds aren't good, let's pass on the trade. Sometimes it's the trades you don't take that make all the difference. It's what's known as playing the probabilities and playing good defense. Now, bottom line is the stock was 126.73. This spread would have been the 126, 141, and 
the stock is trading at 140 right now in the aftermarket because they just blew out the numbers. And you would have expected that because the power gauge rating was bullish. But the options probability just wasn't there. So you go on to another trade. It's as simple as that. Now, I want to expose you to three other patterns. Two of them we're going to combine into one chart. Dynamic duo, personality changes, and then that very special way to use check and money flow that we talked about, stealth accumulation and distribution. So the dynamic duo is another way of saying that fundamentals matter. It's the combination of fundamentals and technicals, check and power gauge rating and check and relative strength. Finds big winners and losers. With one caveat that relative strength can stand alone as a bullish or bearish indicator. We call those stocks momentum stocks. Just be aware if you're trading a momentum stock where the fundamentals don't support the momentum move, you're on a high wire without a safety net. Use stops, protect your capital because if something goes wrong and inevitably it does, that fall from grace is very, very painful. So let's look at an example of what we call personality changes. A stock that's been outperforming the market starts to underperform the market. We call that a bearish personality change. And when a stock that's been underperforming starts to outperform, it's a bullish personality change. And here's a wonderful example of that in a very tough group, the retail group. So Macy's was underperforming the market until late November, had a very positive earnings report spiked up and began to outperform the market and the power gauge turned bullish. Now, I don't like to buy that first spike. What I like to do is wait for the first buy signal. In this case, we got a buy signal about three weeks later. This is our oversold buy. And by the way, you can go to our website, chickenanalytics.com. We explain these signals. They're all filtered by either the power gauge rating or relative strength. So they're not just a technical pattern. They're supported by either fundamentals or relative price performance. In this case, you had that wonderful first buy signal, great place to enter a swing trade or an options trade. And we've had three other buy signals subsequent to that. These signals work about two thirds of the time. You see this one over here was a little bit troublesome. So three out of four have worked and they tend to last five to 10 trading sessions. So they're shorter term in nature, they're for swing trading, shorter term options trading, but look how wonderfully this last buy signal worked. The stock went from 35 all the way to 41, and that's what discipline trading is all about. Now, on the downside, again, read the chart from the bottom up, power gauge bearish, this is Albemarle Chemicals and the S&P 500, Chemical stocks have been weak. There's your industry group strength working for you on the downside. It's a weak group. Underperforming the market. So there's your bearish personality change. It came with the stock at about 132. At that point, you're looking for opportunities to short the stock. So you want that first sell signal. This was our relative strength sell about two and a half weeks later. At 125, the stock gapped down on some negative story on the stock, went all the way to 100, rallied up ahead of earnings, gave us another relative strength sell signal, and then you see that gap down in earnings. And these gaps are your friend. You want to sell the rallies, sell the gaps on the upside, and cover your shorts on the downside. You're a trader. You're not an investor. Very rarely do you find an investment short in life. These are trading ideas. Now, it's important to spot these personality changes because sometimes they come early in a move of overvalued stocks like Sun Edison, which the brokerage firms were recommending and the hedge funds were in love with. The bearish personality change and the weak check and money flow combined with a bearish power gauge rating gave you all the ammunition you need to get out of the stock between 25 and 28 when most Savvy investors wrote it all the way down until it finally filed for bankruptcy. That's why you need to know about personality changes. You can spot them on stockcharts.com with their scooter indicator. We combine it all on one chart with the fundamentals. Now this sell signal that most people never see, we call it the Chaken Bearish Money Flow Sell Alert. 
So here's advanced auto parts. This chart ends in May of 2017. Here was your momentum move, unsupported by fundamentals because the power gauge had been bearish. Stock reports a positive earnings surprise, gaps up, and you get a little bit of buying. Shake and money flow is strong. And then you come back up and you test the old high. And money flow stays red, not green. Should be going green, telling you the institutions are buying. Instead, smart money was selling. And we call that a bearish money flow sell alert. Then the other patterns kick in. Starts to underperform the market. That's your bearish personality change. Power gauge turns bearish. Now the market agrees with the model. You get another overbought sell signal. This is an eight day high in a stock with a bearish rating. And the stock gaps down on earnings and you cover it as a trader, but the ultimate low on the stock is 78 and change. So you don't want to bottom fish. There were other relative strength sell signals on rallies. There's always an opportunity to get short a stock where everything is bearish. Now I'd like you to look over my shoulder and I'll walk you through a trade that goes from bullish to bearish. And this is what it's, this is the whole enchilada. I write a weekly market letter called Market Insights. On September 24th of 17, I made DR Horton my bullish stock of the week. It was 36.90. Why did I do that? Read the chart from the bottom up, please. Power gauge was bullish, outperforming the market. Big accumulation, it had triggered a buy signal previously. I recommended it on that pullback to the 21 day average. And the stock went almost straight up, home builder, building homes for first time home buyers who had come back into the market, went from 36.90 to 50. Shake and money flow was strong all the way up. And then something happened. It made a new high at the upper volatility band and shaken money flow stayed red, not green. That arrow should be over the left. Bearish money flow sell alert. At that point, if you're still long, get out. When Barron's recommends it at 48 down here, you stay out of the way and you're looking for opportunities to sell the stock, relative strength sell signals. Now we had an earnings report before the opening today. So I told you that I show you how to deal with earnings before and after the report. So what happened yesterday? DR Horton traded down to the lower volatility band where it's bounced one, two, three times ahead of earnings. So if you were short the stock, that's a wonderful spot to say, I'm gonna watch earnings because the stock is already oversold. And sure enough, they beat estimates it gapped up to 42. It lost a lot of that gain later in the day. But you were managing your trade by knowing, A, the stock was due to report, and B, that it was at the lower volatility band. Now, it's important because you don't want to be stuck in a trade. And these tools give you the disciplined approach to enable you to, A, be bullish on the stock on the way up, know it's time to get out, Look for that bearish personality change and then start either avoiding or shorting the stocks. Now, everything having to do with home builders, from appliance stocks to carpet stocks, has been a disaster here in earnings season, and we're going to look at that in a minute. So what we've been talking about up to now is what Warren Buffett calls the fat pitch. He's famously said they don't call balls and strikes on Wall Street, so you don't have to swing at every pitch. You can wait for your pitch. We call it the ideal setup. What's missing are the, those six pairs of buy and sell signals. We've looked at two of them. Money flow signal is also very, very good for trading. And again, it's nice to know that they're there, but how do you know that they've triggered? Well, we instituted a new service for Chaken Analytics members, daily email alerts on two different lists. One that you maintain of your favorite stocks, either to love or hate or both and then a larger list like the S&P 500. So in my email alert on June 26, right before a webinar, Citrix triggered an oversold buy signal. You get this at eight o'clock in the morning, so you can put on a trade. Notice that Chipotle turned bullish that day. Chipotle reported blowout numbers after the close today. Even though the rating has gone neutral, the stock's been a great performer. Knowing these things, 
Expedia, which blew out the numbers, analysts were revising their estimates up just three weeks ago. A pattern of earnings estimate revisions ahead of earnings typically very bullish. So let's see what happened to Citrix. There's your buy signal. And this morning, they responded to much better than expected earnings by spiking up five points. You take the gift that the gods give you. The trade came in at 104. It spiked up to 111, 112, actually spiked up to 114. Take your profit. Even though money flow is strong, it's overbought. That's a gift from the gods. Just take it and nail it down. Sell the spike. You're positioned in ahead of the earnings. It wasn't making a new all-time high like Facebook was. So what's the difference between Facebook, which also triggered a buy signal roughly the same day, June 26th, and Citrix? Well, Facebook spiked up yesterday and closed at a new all-time high ahead of the earnings. Expectations were enormous. And when they reported disappointing numbers and guided lower, the stock was a disaster trading all the way down to 146 in the pre-market and trading up around 165, 170 uh, today. You could have sold the stock on that spike ahead of the earnings report. Expectations were sky high. Notice, looking back, even in a huge uptrend, when this stock was overextended heading into earnings, it's better to sell it ahead of the earnings report. And that would have been the case yesterday. So that's how you could have managed Facebook. Would I have been buying puts? I wish, but I didn't. But if you could just gotten out of the stock ahead of the earnings report, you spared yourself all that pain and suffering. Now let's talk about defense very briefly because we saw one way to play defense, which is to avoid options trades that don't have a high probability of success based on implied volatility and expected trading ranges. But playing good defense means knowing what stocks not to own. Amberella and the semiconductor group had a bearish personality change, rallied up ahead of the last earnings report. Great spot to sell the stock or put on a vertical put spread around 55. In fact, my partner, Dan Russo, who's our chief market strategist, recommended a short sale at Amberella in his daily market Morning Insights, and when they reported a disappointing quarter, that trade, which you could have put on around 54, looked very profitable at 42. Power gauge rating was bearish, underperforming the market. Use the signal as your entry. Now, I've been quoted as saying bottom fishing is the most expensive sport in America, so let's have a little fun here because I want you to say goodbye to bottom fishing. At the bottom of this chart, I've cut out the key indicators, power gauge, relative strength, and money flow on a stock that reported earnings after the close yesterday. Now, check and money flow is improving. You might have been tempted to bottom fish, but if you did, you would have been buying Whirlpool and sadly disappointed. Just like DR Horton has been in a downtrend now for six months, Whirlpool, which provides the appliances that go into new homes, has been in a downtrend, and they reported disappointing earnings. We had triggered an overbought sell signal about a week and a half ago with the stock at about 154. It spiked down yesterday over 16%, continued lower the, pre the following day, and then today finally stabilized. But you went from 150 all the way down to 122. Think about that. If you can avoid these stocks, you're playing good defense. If you're looking for short sale candidates or put candidates with those vertical put spreads, these are very profitable trades. And this is a good lead into the final segment of the webinar, which is how you win during earnings season. How do you own earnings season? Because volatility presents opportunities. And you can be better prepared for earnings reports because the power gauge rating is your GPS. You'll know with a high degree of certainty if a stock is likely to meet, beat, or disappoint. So let's look at a stock from the past. I call this a golden oldie. This is a chart that ends in May of 17. Best Buy was due to report earnings right before a webinar that I gave on May 24th. 
that had just triggered a buy signal. We said this is a great low risk options trade ahead of earnings. And you see that it spiked up on a very positive earnings surprise. And we got this testimonial from someone who put on that trade. 257% in 24 hours, gave options one more try. This is someone who was not making money in options and was surprised with the results. My biggest winner of the year. And the guidance in your webinars gave me the confidence to pull the trigger. Now, here's one more golden oldie. We all know that Netflix dropped dramatically Last week, I happen to benefit personally. I bought two put options. I was willing to risk $750, made 200% on that trade. This has happened before. This goes back to 2014. Netflix dropped 100 points from 460 to 340 on a negative earnings surprise after an overbought sell signal, 50 times on out of the money options in one day. So let's look at more recent examples after we look at another testimonial made a quick 21,500. Used your upcoming earnings ideas in Chaikin Analytics. Netflix had a bearish rating, bought three put contracts before earnings for 2220, sold them for 9390. Happy subscribers, this has been working for six years now. So a more recent example. Dan Russo made Philip Morris his bearish stock of the day in his morning insights. Based on that sell signal ahead of earnings, negative earnings surprise, the power gauge has been bearish all year. Tobacco stocks have been a disaster. Consumer staples have been a disaster until just recently. That's how you conquer earnings season. Put on an options position ahead of those earnings. It drops from 100 all the way to 80. Very quickly, that trade is a wonderful, profitable trade with limited risk. Now let's look at companies that are reporting this week. Every week in our weekly newsletter, Market Insights, we highlight the stocks that are due to report and whether they have a bullish, neutral, or bearish rating. So we've already looked at Whirlpool, which reported on Monday and dropped 18% in two days. Yesterday, we had Biogen reporting two days ago, rather and Centene, HCA yesterday, Facebook obviously, and then Mohawk. So let's start with Mohawk because I miss this trade quite honestly. It was on our best bears list. Mohawk and Whirlpool are tied at the hip and typically Mohawk reports two days after Whirlpool. If Whirlpool reported disappointing earnings, Mohawk with a bearish power gauge rating, which is in the carpet business, was probably going to do it as well. I just didn't put the pieces together. But the company reported disappointing earnings and gapped down 17% this morning. That's how you conquer earnings season. You put on trades ahead of earnings with limited risk using put spreads or put options outright, and you benefit from the GPS quality of the power gauge. You also had a bearish money flow sell alert. Notice how you rallied up toward the upper volatility band, got overbought, bearish stock, money flow was going nowhere. Smart money didn't participate in that move when the stock went from 222 to 242. They were still selling the stock as they had been. So this shows you how this all ties together. And they reported a negative earnings surprise yesterday after the close, weak industry, weak trend, weak power gauge, there's where your profit on the downside is. Now let's look at HCA Holdings, same general group as Centene, which we use as our classic bull. Power gauge is bullish, outperforming the market. You got that re-entry buy signal, the relative strength buy there. And guess what? It spiked up this morning, sell the spike. It's your gift, just like it was back here on this earnings report. Patterns repeat over and over and over again. Remember I said earlier that earnings surprises come in bunches. The reaction is typically the same as well, as Tom said. So sell the spike back here in January, and you're a very happy trader. And if you sold the spike this morning, you're following the same discipline. My head of sales here came in and looked at the deck and he said, gee, I own HCA. Should I be selling it here? I said, well, if you're following the discipline and you're a trader, absolutely. Now let's look at Biogen. 
again, a buy signal. News about an Alzheimer's drug that got everybody excited. It spiked up from 290 to 360. Sell the spike. Pulls back. Positive earnings surprise two days ago. Spikes up. Sell the spike because you never know what's going to happen on Wall Street. The same research that got everybody excited about the Alzheimer's drug caused the stock to drop 10% today. Wall Street is anything if not unpredictable. I can't tell you what changed, but if you sold the spike after the earnings report, if you were smart enough to get in or get back in, you're very happy. These are gifts from the gods. Sell the spikes if you're a trader. Now, here's a stock, Starbucks, that reported after the close today. I put it in the deck to show you what's possible ahead of earnings. Now, we had a really great call in my market insights. I said, swap out of Starbucks back here in June into Chipotle. That trade has worked out very well. And Starbucks was due to report earnings after the close. Analysts were lowering their estimates. Rather than short the stock with unlimited risk, Options play suggested a vertical put spread. So for $108, with the stock trading at 51.60 this morning, you had the potential to make almost a $300 profit if the stock traded back down to that $48 area. Now, the company reported stocks trading up maybe 10 cents. It's trading right at 51.60. This option expires tomorrow. It's what I call a binary option. Either they were going to disappoint and spike down, and they still may, or you lose $100. But it's a lot better than shorting the stock and watching it go up 10% against you, where you have unlimited risk. So that's an example of how I would have handled Starbucks ahead of this afternoon's earnings report. Do the vertical put spread, make 300% if you're right, lose 100 bucks if you're wrong, and sleep well at night. So what we've been talking about is all in Chaken Analytics. It's a proven stock selection system which gives options traders that directional edge. It incorporates our 20-factor model and our stock discovery ideas engine, which we didn't have time to go into, for which we won the Benziga FinTech Award for Best Ideas Platform. It's what enabled me to rec recommend a swap out of Starbucks into Chipotle because it recommends swaps as well as new ideas. You've seen the screener and the options play ideas module. And the whole package lists for $2,195 a year for an annual subscription to become a member of Chaken Analytics. But as a webinar special for Tom Gentile's community, like to take $300 off webinar special reducing the cost to only $1,895. You can go to chickenanalytics.com slash earnings. This offer is good through July 29th. And we got this testimonial from someone who subscribed to Chicken Analytics recently. In the five business days I've been using Chicken Analytics, I paid for the subscription over tenfold. These initial results of nothing short of outstanding. GC was trading options ahead of earnings, and that's where the big juice is. Now, in addition, you get our intraday charts, the earnings alerts, and my weekly market insights with a bullish or bearish stock of the week and my market commentary. Plus, as a Chaken member, and this slide is perhaps the most important one other than that wonderful Chaken bearish money flow sell alert, you get member-only access to our weekly strategy webinar with our chief market strategist, Dan Russo. Dan is the head of the New York chapter of the Chartered Market Technicians. He was on Bloomberg yesterday. He was on stockcharts.com today. This little rascal is everywhere, and he's doing a great job picking winners and losers, shorts and longs. You get unlimited coaching and support, including small group sessions, and if you need it, one-on-one -on -one coachings. And you get Dan Russo's daily morning insights where he recommended Amberella and Philip Morris as short sales. and a host of winning stocks over the last six months. So one final inducement to get you to become a member of the Chaken Analytics community. When you subscribe by midnight tonight, we'll take an additional $100 off the cost of Chaken Analytics. 
reducing the cost to $17.95. Plus, for the first 10 people who subscribe tonight, you'll get a one-on-one -on -one telephone session with me after you've gotten up and running with the system where we talk about your trading strategy and how to use Chaken Analytics to help become a better options trader. So with that, I'd like to thank all of you for staying with us and turn it back to Tom with great thanks for turning out such a huge crowd today. Hey, Mark, thanks a lot. I appreciate you uh, offering up the, your education, uh, also your uh, outlook on Q2 earnings and, uh, and also the fantastic price that you're doing because I actually am on um, a, my multiple monitors. I'm checking out Chaikin's Analytic just to see your, your, price, your regular price. And, and if, you, if all of you were to go and look at, his, at, at, at Mark's regular price, you can see this is a substantial discount off of uh, what he charges online. Um, you know, one of the things, and I've said this uh, before, that uh, that I really like about Shaken Analytics is they got a what I like to call a superb charting program. I mean the capabilities here are, are fantastic. Uh, I don't know who put your who put your uh, uh, charting program together, but the visuals on it are fantastic. Uh, it really is nice, and I know that the engine behind it is just as just as well. Um, you know the one thing that uh, that I can tell you guys is that Mark has some really great proprietary indicators and algorithms on his uh, software. And so, you know, for that, um, you know, I think, it, I think it's a fantastic addition to whatever it is that you use to help pick stocks. And so, uh, Mark, thanks again. I appreciate you uh, uh, spending your time with us this afternoon. Um, and uh, look forward to talking to you again soon. Well, thanks, uh, Tom. And by the way, that shout out was for my son, Eric, and the whole development team. Eric has been my user interface guru since um, we started in 1989 with the company we sold to Reuters. So uh, appreciate that. It, it strikes very close to home. And I know Josh Minlin is putting up the, um, the login box to get that extra discount right now in um, one of the windows on your screen and I'm going to turn it back to Josh to wrap up the webinar. Thanks everybody. Really appreciate your being with us. Thank you everybody for attending. Thank you, Mark and Tom. Uh, you can take advantage of our offer using the chat window. I have posted in the chat window, our link, the, Discount will automatically be applied. You can also call us at 877-697-6783. Again, to take advantage of this offer, use the link in the chat window. The discount code will automatically be applied. That's checkinanalytics.com slash earnings or call us at 877-697-6783. Take advantage of Mark's fabulous offer for a one-on-one -on -one with him. That's an incredibly valuable offer uh, and you can be on and up and running on one of our on boards and win one-on-one -on -one with us as bit early next week if you if you'd like again that's 877-697-6783 or chickenanalytics.com slash earnings thank you everybody